we enable that behavior in essence, it's like, it's like that child that's in the, the line of the store and they're throwing a tantrum and they want a candy bar. And it's that mom that's like, oh, here, honey, have the candy bar. Okay. Like she's doing whatever she needs to do to get that kid just to not have a tantrum monster in the future. That child is going to be a freaking monster. And it takes strong will and conscious patience and awareness to tell the child, no, you will not get the candy if you respond in this way. And if you calm down, at some point you may be able to have a candy bar. But today you will not be getting the candy bar because you are res- you, the way you're responding to me is not from love and honor. And you are throwing a, a tantrum and throwing a scene and I'm not going to reward that behavior. I say this because this is like, we can all get that. Any of us that are parents know that we'll create monsters to do that with children. But look at how we do this as a society. How if we run a business, we feel like we've got to bow down to the ones who throw the biggest fit over what things should be like. And my soul knows it's here to create a new way. And so what do we have to do to create a new way? We have to have courage and fearlessness to face those who actually want to continue with the old way that isn't serving them or us. And we have to be willing to take a chance and stand for what matters. And this is the kind of truthful living I'm talking about. It's courageous because in this moment with this client, this client, there's a potential my speaking my truth and and telling her that if you're going to show honor and love, like we can work together. But if there's no love or reverence here, feel free to move along and I will refund your money gladly. There's a chance that person's not going to like me, that they're going to totally take that and twist it around and make it a victim story for themselves. And then they're going to go and lash out and publicly talk about how Tanya love rejected them and told them, you know, put them in their place. And this is a chance that I have that I take every day when I live my truth, because not always do people love when you tell them the truth. In fact, I, I, I most of the time I observe that when you're challenging someone who's been in shadow with something, let's say they've, they've been that toddler throwing a tantrum their whole damn life, and no one's dared to stand up to them because in society, everyone's told we're supposed to cater to that, and we're supposed to just calm them down so that they'll be satisfied customers. Screw that. That is not going to help this planet. It's not going to help that person find their balance. And it's going to make the people that are living that way pissed off. And at least for me, when I'm honest, when I feel like I have to cater to people's misalignment, it pisses me off. And if I don't express that truth, it's going to feel stuck in me. And I feel like that's a lot of what this last week has been for me is like helping me process and clear and move the congestion out of my heart space of how much I swallow back and I bite my tongue, and I hold my truth in out of compassion and patience is what I tell myself. But sometimes, is it that, or is it just that a little bit of me is afraid if I spoke my truth, I'd not be invited back. I would be rejected once again. And if we can really at least see that, it helps us to break free of the enslavement, helps us to break free of the shackles of that, so that nobody else owns our expression. Nobody controls us. Like, As a healer, I love helping people. And yesterday I did teach a workshop that I could handle for a couple hours. And then at the end of that, I was exhausted because that was how much I could give that day. And I knew it. And I did this vision board workshop that was very peaceful. We were talking so much about the importance of, of presence and of honor and living authentically. And what was beautiful is the group of people that gathered in my home they were so respectful and so honoring. And these women, <clears throat> some of them had just had like an auric clearing with me. Most of them had had auric clearings with me. And one new woman had not yet, but she's coming to see me Tuesday, which I'm excited about. And some of them have mentored with me, done yoga teacher trainings. But what was cool is that sitting in this group, I, in my heart, wanted to help inspire love and passion in them and help them ignite their dreams in this new year. And this was our intention with the vision board workshop and in their hearts, they expressed back to me honor and reverence for all that I had done to help them. And it was this beautiful time at that table of sacred heart expression back and forth. And that is what I'm here to enjoy more of in 2016 
not having people who want to come in and bark orders at me that don't even know me, telling me what I'm supposed to be doing, this old paradigm, and then at the same time projecting that they're very spiritually aligned and that they have been training and mentoring with so many people. And, and you know what? I don't give a shit. Like people that want to tell me how many mentors they've worked with, they want to tell me how many books they've read, they want to tell me all the classes they've taken on spirituality. And then at the same time, they show no honor, no reverence, no respect, and they do not step in in a moment of presence. That tells me everything. And so what I hope to mirror to all of you watching today is what if this year we all really could boldly and confidently move forward with fearlessness, with courage, with confidence in ourselves, in our own highest self. And what if we had the courage to speak our truth? Even when it means that we may not get that contract, even if it means that those people, you know, that we work for might fire us, they might lay us off. That's the kind of truth telling that we need to embody to change this planet around, to shift things around. If we got a bunch of people walking around that are talkers and they're not following through, it's going to create chaos and it's going to stall forward, ex forward expansion and forward evolution. If we have a bunch of people that walk around biting their tongue and they never speak their truth. It's creating this suppressed feeling, this congestion that never lets the energy move. And for me, what I realize health is in essence is allowing energy to move and flow through freely. So if we're not allowing that freedom and that movement, we actually create stagnation. We create congestion and it turns into disease. And for me, it was a week's lesson and sometimes spirit has a beautiful way of giving me a human experience again, because I have not been sick in years. But when I was in that experience, it taught me so much compassion for, for one, having greater compassion to the humans that are healing, that are sick, because you really can't think very straight and you don't feel very good. And so it takes a lot of strength and a lot of focus to stay in that alignment of focusing on the positive and focusing on wholeness and alignment when you're not feeling well. So it was really beautiful eye-opener and helping me remember what a challenge that can be. It was also a great time for stillness. I was writing my book like a mad woman. I've written pages and pages and pages of a book that I'm writing now, and it's just coming out of me. And it was beautiful because I, it brought me this inner reflective time to also see how much of my day and time do I just give away to others? You know, the person that in, there's a person that's kind of going through a struggle and they're asking me my opinion and advice. And I sit there and talk to them for hours in the kitchen or on the phone. And, and, and then next thing I know, the day is gone and I did not focus on anything that really mattered to me. Now, it's important, I feel, to balance this because I love to be there for others. But part of what I'm learning to balance in my own life for this next year is that I make sure I claim time for things that matter to me. If I can write a book that's very empowering and full of wisdom and it can get out to many, that can help many lives. That's important. And if I never give time for that to happen, because I'm, I'm always like trying to give advice to all these people that just want to take, take, take from me. And they don't really care what that does to me at the end of the day. That's part of my own lesson of self-love. And that's what I'm hearing to all of you is in your own life, if we look in, are we doing this to ourselves? Are we putting our own passions last? Are we putting everybody else's needs first? As mothers, as fathers, do we go and cater to all the needs of everyone around us, but we don't really honor the needs in ourselves? Like, it sounds silly, but I talk a lot about the inner child. And I, just yesterday, I told my beloved, I was like, I really just feel like I want to color. Like, I just need to go color. Like, that's something very therapeutic to me. And we go to get a calendar last night um, when we were running around. We went to get some dinner, my Thai soup that helps heal me and decongest me. And uh, we went by the bookstore, and they had this calendar that's like a coloring calendar, and you can color it yourself. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I was just talking about I wanted to color, and here's this amazing calendar, and it's like 60% off. Awesome. So I bought the calendar. But I see that to all of you as – you know, just to mirror the importance of honoring our inner child, honoring that time for stillness. And today's show, I feel in essence, is the importance of speaking our truth. And, you know, for me, maybe this client, I spoke my truth to her and she won't ever talk to me again and she wants her money back. Awesome. At the end of the day, 
I spoke my truth. I stood up for what I really feel is right in my soul. And I feel good about that. I feel great. So if we can practice that, more of us speaking our truth of what makes us feel great because it shows love to ourselves, it doesn't matter if you don't get that money or that contract or that friend or that like on Facebook. Get past all that because I feel like that's what's enslaving a lot of us is that too many of us are afraid of will they accept me? Will they like me? Will they, you know, come back to my workshop if I don't tell them what they want to hear? I feel like our our true highest aligned mission and responsibility, if we're really here as light workers, is to embody truth and to speak that truth. And we can speak that truth with love and compassion. We don't need to be mean and hateful. That's never going to be a good idea. But speaking that truth, if someone's out of alignment, like if I'm, you know, at my in-laws and they're totally projecting BS and not showing honor and I'm just biting my tongue uncomfortably and I keep having to go there thinking I have to keep going there. How is that serving my happiness and my feeling empowered? It's not. And in essence, it's also also catering to that behavior that's going to keep that enslavement going. So big picture, maybe I speak my truth and maybe they never want to talk to me again. But the way we'll know is by speaking our truth. And when I have the courage to speak my truth, I find that those who really are meant to be on my path with me, they have deeper respect for me. Um, one example I'll give real quick and then I'll pause because I have been talking for half an hour, which was interesting because I wasn't even sure I knew what I was going to talk about. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Um, but one of the things this morning is after I spoke my truth with William and I was telling him about my dreams and everything and I spoke my truth on Facebook and he read, you know, saw what I wrote. He came down and he was processing his dream and just gave me a big hug. He had tears in his eyes and he's like, baby, I was processing my dream and like it's I realized I really do need to get out of my own way and why have I been procrastinating and it was like this amazing revelation that he had about his own life and how he had not been completely embodying his divine masculine and that he's ready to like what is he afraid of and it was beautiful because we loving each other can help each other move forward if he sees I'm stuck he'd be like what are you afraid of why are you stuck like let me help you move forward and that is what I feel the true twin flame relationship is about, is helping each other rise and rise and continue to rise in expansion so that we ignite each other. And that's what we're here to do for each other in our sacred you know, union of a relationship that's very intimate. And then to mirror that outward to everyone we connect with, how to live more truthfully as individuals and as partners, if we're not truthful as ourselves as an individual, how can we really be a truthful partner? And if we want to be in truthful partnerships, you know, if we're not being truthful in our partnerships, how can we be truthful in our parenting or truthful in our, our connection in the community? And for what my soul knows in every cell of my being is that truth matters. Like living in te with integrity, living with truth, even if, after today, some of you are like, what a bitch. Like, she actually said that to her client. I'm never listening to Tanya Love again. Okay, awesome. Because I really am not going to focus on that anymore. It, for me, it's not about how many people like what I have to say. Because often when we're messengers of truth, people don't like what we have to say. Have you guys noticed that? When you're the messenger of truth, maybe somebody's struggling. They know they have an addiction. They need to clear it. They come and ask your opinion. You shine the light on the situation. And then they're like, oh, how dare you say that to me? And you're like, well, wait a minute. I'm just the messenger. You asked what, you know, what I observed. And we've got to stop lashing out at the messengers, I feel, if we want to evolve and we want to have a beautiful new earth reality. Because the messengers come to help with the shift. And if we're trying to make them all feel uncomfortable and intimidate them into silence, how is that serving humanity? How is that serving the whole? And so I'm going to pause for a second because that was a nice little expression for 31 minutes. <laughs> is there anybody commenting, Amnon? And I'm going to go look on the page as well. Mm, nope. Okay. So if you guys have not logged in yet and you want to, feel free to log in on the chat. And if you want to write in any questions and if you relate to something I'm going through and you're like, wow, like I've really bit my tongue many times and, and that's awesome, Tanya, like you're mirroring that to me or, 
you know, well, what about this time? I disagree with you. Like, bring it. Like, tell me what you're feeling. Um, remember the numbers 